Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Pitch, the webinar for business cases and pitches. My name is Thomas Wittig, and our topic today will be growth reality checks, how to check if your plan is feasible and scalable. So I will be walking you through this webinar. Um, there is also a, a course uh, which is running at any time, which you Welcome to join. Our topic today, again, is uh, mainly about the reality checks. Um, and the, the background was that, um, of course, I see a lot of business cases and, and proposals. And uh, sometimes um, you wonder and you're scratching your head and saying like, okay, can this really be um, uh, realistic what I'm, I'm seeing here? And so I decided to put a, a, a few things together and share some uh, tactics that you could apply before actually pitching your business case. As always, there's more content and templates and tools available. So check back on um, other material here on our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube slash Wittigonia, or go to our academy, that's academy.wittigonia.com. And of course, new announcements and uh, upcoming webinars are um, featured on the website wittigonia.net. So uh, again, my name is Thomas Wittig. For those who joined us a little bit uh, later, I see that people are still coming in right now. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of Wittigonia and working with uh, companies um, mainly in, in the area of innovation, growth, and transformation topics. So um, here's our agenda for today. Again, three points, pretty straightforward. I'll give a little bit of a background, uh, why reality checks are important and what it means for you as a, um, let's say as a presenter, but also for those who are joining as uh, investor or business angel. Um, this also could be interesting in, in order to prepare your, your teams actually before they uh, come to you and, and presenting. And then I will share about five, six, um, um, ideas about uh, how to go about reality checks and how to look at the proposal from different angles. And as always, we will have a short Q and live Q and A here at the end of the webinar. And that is extended usually by, um, uh, a Q and A on the Facebook website, shape growth. That's one word, shape growth. So, um, for those who signed up to the webinar, um, you will be, uh, receiving, um, a link to the replay right after this uh, webinar. And from there, you can also submit some additional questions. And uh, for those who, who will see it later, it will be made available on our YouTube channel. And please uh, um, do us a favor, please uh, rate, comment and share so that we see which uh, type of content uh, is useful for you and uh, that we can bring you the best content to accomplish your goals. Okay. So let's dive into the first topic. Why reality checks? Why is it important? Uh, as I said in previous uh, webinars, and I cannot emphasize it uh, highly enough, a credibility of your adoption story is really of the essence. So you really want to pay attention to um, if the, the story uh, is holding true, if it's credible, if it's reasonable, if it's feasible, etc. So make sure you, you do a good job in thoroughly forecasting, validating, and, and creating evidence as you go forward. Um, as we have seen from, from many um, different projects, the, the, the main reasons why um, projects struggle or even fail is that uh, there is an issue with the adoption, the product adoption. And also oftentimes it's a team, but of course they are interrelated. Very rarely it has to do with funding and technology, which are not uh, really the um, the leading effects here. And of course, the, the product adoption is key to drive the, uh, to fuel the growth cycle. Uh, because only if your, your product is being adopted means customers are purchasing it. Um, then you can make revenue, generate some profits, uh, scale up your staff, allocate marketing expenses, and then the cycle continues from the beginning again. Again, this is uh, something I have mentioned several times. Uh, take a look at the um, the blog uh, post about hockey stick confessions. Uh, it goes back to a, a, a study we made, uh, both as a, a field survey study as well as a, 
um, an exercise during workshops. I still like to do this and I let people estimate uh, the uptake of a viral adoption curve to see uh, if we have the right mental model uh, and estimating the sales volume, the growth of the customer base. The bottom line here was that people usually have uh, difficulties in assessing how uh, a viral adoption um, actually takes place, even in a very controlled environment like we did here. We use, uh, uh, let's say, uh, management flight simulators, in other words, simulations, uh, which illustrate how an adoption would um, flow, actually, would, would work out and unfold if you can control the different parameters. And of course, you can make this more or less complex, but even with the, the simplest model, our human brain cannot really cope with the non-linear effect. So it's important to acknowledge that and um, start learning uh, a bit more about this uh, topic, of course. Now, in the center of everything that, that we do as <clears throat> uh, innovators and entrepreneurs or transformers in the corporate world, uh, of course, when, when you have... Um, let's say, the ability to execute, then you can usually show some performance in the market, meaning customers are buying your products, partners are joining, um, <clears throat> independent developers are co-creating applications and, and other forms to your platform. And uh, as you deliver market performance, your credibility increases, you get more organizational support from management, investors, etc. And of course, they will allocate resources, which again gives you more ability to execute. We call this the success to the successful, uh, this, this virtual cycle. And of course, this cycle is uh, also important to, to drive your uh, let's say your, your growth cycle, which is here a very simplified uh, form. Only if you can allocate the resources and drive revenue, then you are able to, um, to deliver a growth story. Now, of course, this cycle can also, uh, the, the wheel can actually roll backwards. So if you, if you fall behind with market performance, then you lose credibility. Um, you, you're losing the organizational support, you're facing lack of resources, which impedes your ability to execute. And so that takes a, a very different spin and that could bring your whole project or initiative or campaign, even marketing campaigns uh, and, and programs uh, pretty much to a halt. And that's not where we want to go. So it's, it's of course important to understand how to do it. Now, in terms of the areas of applications, um, we we can of course check so many different areas uh, in uh, in our business case in our plan and of course we, we will have to do that when we we get closer to executing a plan but even before we present I would highly recommend to uh, take each one of these areas and apply some reality checks and always ask yourself. Uh, is it true? Is it reasonable? What uh, evidence do we have? Why, why do we make these assumptions? Now, for our topic here today, I want to focus mainly on growth because growth is uh, the main topic in, um, in, in many areas, as I just explained. And uh, I would like to walk you through, um, let's say, five, six different um, aspects of how to think about a reality check. And I give you a couple of tools here as well. The um, <clears throat> the reality checks um, are explained then in in more detail in in some of the courses. Uh, if you if you would like to have step by step guides or videos, tools and templates and formulas and whatnot, um, that's all available in, for example, the the class uh, pitch, which comes in two two language versions: the English version, the German version, and uh, of course the shape growth classes. Um, there's even one. It's a deep dive about. Uh, software as a service metrics and KPI. So make sure to check it out. Now to go into the the ideas here. So well, first of all, what, what I would do is when we talk about addressable market or market at all, I would first ask, okay, what is the, the total market? And of course you want to know what is the addressable market. Addressable market meaning what is actually the subset of the uh, customer base that uh, or potential customer base that we can actually target and sell sell to and here's one way to think about it so from the the total market you basically take away all everything that is not technically feasible so 
uh, technically feasible means if your if your product has a limited functionality and you cannot you sure you cannot just win some some uh, customers and here let's say twenty percent or so from your customers, then um, it's not worth uh, factoring that in. So exclude that from your consideration. Then. Of course, um, it's also not uh, ideal to sell to customers who really don't have a need. For example, those who just implemented a competitive solution and are pretty happy about it, or those that um, are not at the point of replacing their infrastructure for the, for whatever reason. So it's it's not uh, prudent to factor that in, of course. And then um, you you take away those that don't have a budget, and then that gives you your target market. Now, how how to find out about all these factors? Of course, that's not <clears throat> in many cases not so much publicly available information. Um, there are different ways to do it. You can take a look at the industry reports. There's a whole wealth of uh, reports out there. Um, uh, of course, I do recommend to conduct survey, and the more important your project is, the more thoroughly you want to conduct these surveys and uh, even spend uh, resources on it, uh, meaning time, people, uh, and budget. And um, for those who, who are having, a, let's say, a, a CRM, I think it will be also important to, um, to tune your, your CRM and to capture as much information as you can about your existing and new customers, of course. And one way to do that is to implement also a lead scoring mechanism so that you really understand are people more here on this right side of the market so they're really becoming a target and they are, uh, as we say, warmed up to, um, to be addressed by the, the product or uh, do they fall into one of the other categories. So you can save yourself a lot of um, time and money and trouble sometimes. But of course the market is not... Um, uh, let's say stable and static. So we also have to take a look at the, uh, the dynamic view of the market. And um, what I've done here is um, I've put together a, a small simulation, which uh, simulates um, an uptake in the market under three different uh, conditions. So the the red one would be the the base run here. Um, and in addition to that, um, I factored in a one percent fractional loss rate, which means that uh, every month 1% of our market is going away. For example, uh, through demographic change. So let's say your, your age group or age cohort uh, is becoming uh, older and then you have a certain fraction of, of people moving out or you know that a percentage of the customers are moving on to other solutions or don't simply don't have the, the need and the requirement anymore or the preference for your, your product. Now, the, the green uh, scenario here, and that's the green line also here in this chart, that shows an increasing loss fraction, which means the, the, the loss of the market is increasing by just 0.1 percentage points month over month. Uh, and what that means is that we're basically starting out at a 0% loss rate, and then it's it's going up, it's going up uh, again. And you can see already here from the first 12 months or 13 months actually in, in this chart that there is uh, quite a significant uh, difference between these curves. Now, it's always uh, interesting to see how this would play out in the long run if you go beyond this uh, 13 month. And here we have a time frame of 16 months, so five years. And you see that, um, well, in the first year, the, the, the green line is, uh, you, you may be still on, on solid ground, but it's of course not desirable. But really in the long run, um, that is uh, going to be a problem because of your 10 million total market, you are only able to address and capture basically two and a half million. So just a little bit more than a quarter a year. Now the question is, uh, if you know this upfront, would you still enter this market? Would you still go in? Does it uh, does your investment in um, let's say uh, digital transformation or new products really justify the um, the investment? Uh, and is there really a, a chance for a return? So that's something to keep in mind. So make sure that you really understand where the market is going, and not only a static view but a dynamic view over time. 
Then um, another case, um, and I'd like to, to give a little bit attention to the growth story. Now, uh, let's assume, for example, we have this B2B scenario here where we have a, a customer base uh, which is growing, uh, let's say, over five years, and we have a growth target of uh, 30%. So this is typically what we see. And in, in software as a service um, companies, uh, we would like to see a, a growth rate of 30% or higher. Um, and so that's that's important. Now, um, the, the picture could look very different if you factor in the loss rate. And I'm bringing up this topic because usually what you get to see in the business case is only the growing customer base and maybe winning the new customers. But few business cases articulate actually how many customers you are losing and what your churn rate might be. And that's really something uh, I would highly recommend to put in also as a reality check, but also as a, as a more sound assumption. And you can see that the growth rate is actually looking different. Now, of course, there's a little, seems to be like a little dip here. So the, uh, the loss is going down. But as your volume is, is growing, your, um, your number of customers that you're losing might go up again. So the total number of customers, that is. Now, when you, uh, when you factor this in, you get a different picture. So you even see that it's uh, going down a little bit or, or, or stagnant, but then growth is kicking in. And that might be a more realistic picture uh, to portray, right? Um, the reason is when, when you go on a curve and you cannot um, keep up with your own forecasts, uh, that also uh, impacts your credibility. Um, with the investors or board or wh whoever you are, you have been pitching to. So make sure that you factor that in. It's very easy to do and you can do it on the spreadsheet. And the next reality check I would like to recommend is to calculate your compound uh, growth rate or CAGR. Now, um, here in this, um, in this scenario, uh, we might have a growth rate of, let's say, 13%. So that means that on average, the business would grow 13% year over year. And that's already different from, let's say, factoring in uh, a 30% growth rate of new customers that you, you would win. So uh, the question is always, okay, can you grow 13 or 30 or so percent? I'm not saying that's, that's the benchmark here, but it just triggers the question how to think about it. Then the next one, uh, doubling time. It's also a very interesting metric. Now, this is a business here which is not growing so rapidly, but let's say we have some uh, proposals and, and you might want to pitch something which is going taking off fairly rapidly. Um, and I have seen proposals which suggest that the doubling time is less than a year. And there I really need to, to drill in and figure out, is that reasonable? Uh, that a business is doubling in terms of the customer base within, let's say, seven, eight or nine months, less than a year. Uh, I'm not saying it's not feasible. We've seen many businesses that can pull this off. But of course, you need to have the, the strategy behind it. You need to have the resource allocation behind it. That's the real question. So make sure to calculate also the, the, the doubling time. And I, I think it gives you a good sense of um, let's say the, the feasibility of your plan and if you really believe yourself in, in what you're saying there. Now I want to talk a little bit about viral adoption. Again, here is a simulation I've put together for viral adoption. You see how this growth curve is coming together. Um, if, if you don't know how this actually works and why we have the growth curves, I, I strongly recommend to check out the other webinars or replays that we have on the YouTube channel and also the series Shape Growth on the uh, Online Academy. It explains in much detail uh, how the S-shape curve is coming about. And I don't mean that um, we, are, we put it in an extra sheet and then we have it. Um, there is a certain dynamic behind it. There's a, a feedback structure behind it, which uh, produces the S-shape growth curve. And uh, as an entrepreneur, it's super important to understand why that is the case. Now, what I've done here is I have uh, run uh, different simulation experiments. And I've, the only thing that I changed uh, is a variation in the contact rate. So I, I went up from 10 contacts per existing customer per month, 20, 30, 45, 50. 
And um, this is, of course, uh, a matter of the, the, the strength of word of mouth or the, the viral power of the, the business model. And here you can see already a very dramatic difference, right? Uh, if you have only 10 customer uh, contacts, or let's say your existing customers uh, uh, have only, uh, are only in touch with 10 customers per month and with a certain purchase probability, which we set here to 5%, uh, then your, your business model is hardly taking off. So you should not really bet on uh, uh, word of mouth pro uh, promotion here in this scenario. But as soon as you move up, and uh, of course the strongest effect you, you have here with 50 uh, customers, you see that in a fairly short period of time, you have this viral effect, this uh, viral uptake. And of course, the longer it takes, so the longer this, let's say, inflection point moves here to the right, the more you are exposed to competitive threats. So a, a company which can enter in the same market and grow much faster is uh, outperforming you left and right. So again, it's a reality check if your your marketing is um, in good shape. So questions to ask here, um, do we have the right customers engaged and how active are the customers? Do they have uh, a wide network? Are they in touch with a wide network? And you can actually uh, also monitor that by looking at your metrics like uh, daily active users, uh, monthly active users, and so on. So what is their activity? And uh, of course, then the question is, how do you acquire the customers to kickstart this whole movement, which I will cover in a second here in a different uh, slide. So important to, to think this through and uh, figure out if there's a real um, fundamental story behind your S-shaped growth curve. If not, then you're probably going to end up in a scenario like this, which is taking forever, which is fine, but um, I would not put it in, in the pitch deck then. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about customer acquisition cost or CAC. Um, and again, what, what I've done here, it's a fairly similar model. And uh, I have uh, played with the variation. Um, and the interesting question that I was looking at is, uh, what, what is the, uh, the scalability of the, the customer acquisition? And of course, if you have a, a business with, with a very strong word of mouth promotion and a strong viral uh, uptake, then your customer, your cost of customer acquisition is going down. So here you see that in the, the green curve. Why? Because uh, word of mouth means that you actually don't have to spend marketing dollars on campaign, salespeople, et cetera. So it's basically taking off by its own. And we have seen these effects in, let's say, latest mobile devices or uh, social platforms, et cetera, which are taking off like crazy. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this. But on the other hand, if uh, let's say you you are more on the other side of the scale, or even in a B two B business, and you have a you have a business where your your target customers don't have so much uh, contact to others, and the probability of of purchase is very low, then your customer acquisition cost does also doesn't scale that much, right? So your your spending um, of uh, per customer is uh, not amplified in in this way and you see that it's not not um, a, a linear effect so um, of course it's Im important to understand what the the uh, sensitivity and, and flexibilities are here in this uh, scenario questions to ask is here again how active are your customers uh, how strong is the network reach especially of your early adopters and uh, are you targeting also the influencers? The more, the more, uh, the better you are in, in targeting the influencers right at the beginning, the further you can bring down the, the cost. So your, your spend per acquired customer that you have to actually actively bring in is amplified through the word of mouth promotion. And you see quite a dramatic effect. It almost goes down to zero here at this point. All right, so that was it uh, in terms of the um, the uh, reality checks. Um, before I uh, open up for Q and A again, for those who joined a little bit later, please uh, leave a rating, comment, and share the information so that we know what is uh, interesting for you and and what uh, questions are top of mind. 
um, in between the webinars, you can also go to our Facebook group. Uh, that's facebook.com uh, slash shape growth in one word. And there you can um, ask questions also. Um, if, if you would like to get in touch and, and need help with certain areas, uh, here's the contact information. Okay, but now I would like to uh, go to the Q&A and pick up some of the live questions and some questions were uh, submitted earlier actually. And so, okay, so there's um, there was one question from participants. Um, and and the question is about uh, I should go back to one of the charts actually to illustrate what it is about. Uh, yeah, I think this one is a good one. So the question here was, um, what about the um, let's say the stickiness of the product? I would call it right. So the the question actually was, what are the the key factors that drive the um, the different shapes of the S uh, shape growth curve? Um, Simplify, in a simplified way, you can say uh, one effect is the purchase probability and the other one is how many contacts your clients make with each other month over month. So the more contacts um, are talking to each other and let's say the, the more uh, infections you have, quote unquote infections with your product idea, the more uh, or the stronger the, uh, the viral uh, element is of this component. So it's two, two factors to put it in a nutshell. One is contact rate and the second one is uh, purchase probability. And interestingly enough, this is um, um, pretty much the same uh, ad adoption curve, uh, regardless if you are talking about uh, a marketing program or products or whatever. Uh, and um, it's very similar to an infection curve in, let's say, medical science or uh, epidemiology, etc. Okay, so um, the the model that I put together here is based on the so-called bus diffusion model, which is very well known uh, and well described um, model in in uh, marketing research, and um, I use that quite often in in order to illustrate the points. Okay. So um, there was another question, um, how to calculate the doubling time. I should probably step back here. Yeah, it's just this thing here. Um, I'd be happy to give you the formula maybe in, in a different uh, webinar or you can check it out on uh, the, the course website. But uh, roughly speaking, there's a, a rule of thumb that you can use, um, which is basically in, involving the com compound average growth rate. Uh, and it's fairly easy to calculate. So you just put the formula in, in your Excel sheet and uh, then you can apply it to different areas. And by the way, I would not only apply it to the customer base, but also to your revenue growth, your cost growth, etc. It's also important to understand these. In your spreadsheet, you might want to have a, a, a whole column here, which gives you, for example, the um, the growth rates, the doubling time, et cetera. It's always good to have that here as a checkpoint and maybe even um, rows and line items which show you the year over year or month over month uh, growth rate that you have. It's really important um, because think about the, um, the, the growth rates or the, the inflow of new customers, outflow of uh, lost customers really as the key parameters which determine how your customer base is uh, growing. Yeah, and you would need to allocate uh, resources towards measurement, which impact the inflow of new customers. And uh, that's important to articulate. So it's an important reality check. Okay, so yes, that was uh, another question. Um, then there is a, a question about the um, available market. Um, how do I know if my uh, product is actually able to address the market? Well, uh, of course, you, you can do several things here. First of all, you can, um, in a very early phase when you even don't have a product, you can work with uh, things like uh, online ads, for example. So you can make an advertisement campaign and, and see what resonates with people and how the marketing metrics evolve from that. I think that gives you a very early indication if your your product generates some interest at all. Secondly, um, you can work with surveys. 
but really uh, when when the fun really starts uh, is when you can work with a minimum viable product and the minimum viable product ideally should have an end-to-end -end, uh, cross-section of your entire process it doesn't have to be complete it doesn't have to be beautiful but you can for example showcase a scenario for a given customers how they would work with your product and then you can see if it's sticky if it's worthwhile if it's adding value uh, for example in the b2b world if it's um, bringing the the cost down for the customer or helps them to to drive more business etc so that's the that's the ways to do it early and um, uh, I, I certainly would recommend to do as many experiments as necessary in order to confirm the as assumptions that you have step by step. Okay, so I think that was uh, uh, it for today. If you have further questions, again, feel free to uh, bring it up again in the uh, webinars or also send us email to info at wittigonia.net and reach out on the Facebook uh, groups. Um, and again, we would be very pleased to have you in one of our next uh, webinars. So I would like to thank you again and uh, wish you good luck with your growth strategies and hope that we will see many, many projects uh, coming to fruition and being successful. Okay, good luck. Take care.